what's up guys welcome back to another video thank you for tuning in on the channel here uh today i have a truck in the shop that uh, has one thing that a lot of people will neglect and push off as long as possible until it's no longer uh can be pushed off uh and that is going to be glow plugs on a six liter truck uh, a lot of times you'll have them burnt out uh, modules go bad very common uh, another thing that's common is the harnesses are pretty junky but uh we're going to overhaul the entire system today on a truck and i'm just going to continue on with my series of pretty in-depth uh repair videos like my oil cooler video uh, thank you all so much for uh, watching that video. It received a lot of good feedback, had a lot of views. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on with that. So this will be a longer video. I'm going to show you all all the tips and tricks that I know uh, to do this job. Uh, I do it a little differently than most people. Uh, so I'll show you my way. Uh, the other way to do it would be to pull your fender liners, your inner fender liners, and uh, try doing it that way. But I have found that uh, getting the harness out is just an absolute nightmare. Uh, doing it that way, they'll break off and you'll be trying to push self taps into it and try and get it out that way. A lot of times they just break off, you'll end up chiseling plastic out and it's just a headache. So the way that I do it, super easy, they pop out and you're good to go. So I'll show you my way. If you wanna do it the other way, you're more than welcome to. But uh, another thing I want to state at the beginning of this video is uh we are right at the the edge of a thousand subscribers here i think we've got like less than 50 to go so i just wanted to take a quick second at the beginning of this video to say just how grateful i am to all of you y'all are awesome thank you so much for watching the videos subscribing to the channel liking the videos commenting uh you got everybody's just awesome i never thought that it would grow this much so i hope we can just keep on the trucking here and uh uh, we'll get to growing some more and keep on with these uh, videos. Uh, continuing on with our, you know, more detailed uh, videos here on repairs. Uh, I do have a truck outside that has popped head gaskets. Uh, so we are going to do an in-depth video. I know there's a bunch of people asking about doing that. So we're going to do a full from the get video on cab removal, head gaskets, the way to do it the correct way. And uh, so we'll do that video probably coming up here very, very soon. But uh, we're going to do these glow plugs and get it knocked out first. So it's out of the shop, out of the way. And then we'll get that truck on the rack. But uh, I'm going to go over here on the bench and I'm going to show you the differences in parts from early model 6 liter to late model 6 liter. And then we're going to jump on the truck. So let's do it. All right, guys. So now we are going to go over our parts list here on doing this job. Uh, there are differences between early model 6 liter and late model 6 liter. When I say early model, I mean 03 to 04 and a half, and then late model 04 and a half to 07. So these parts do carry over to 2010 in the Econo line uh, vans. So 6 liters did run to 2010 in those. So if uh, you see that, that's why. But uh, let's go down the list here. We have a brand new glow plug module. Uh, Pause the video if you need that part number. Obviously, I use nothing but Motorcraft Ford parts uh, in all my trucks, work trucks, and personal trucks. So there is our glow plug module. This is going to be your passenger side glow plug uh, harness. So copy that number there. That is for the passenger side. And then this is your driver side uh, glow plug harness so copy that part number right here to go get it there is a difference in length between these two so they are two different part numbers one is passenger one is driver this is the next part that is very very crucial that you get right uh these are two different part numbers you have a zd32 which is your late model so 04 and a half to 07 glow plug and then your part number for your early model will be a ZD31. They just recently changed these from, I think, 12 and 13. So ZD12 and ZD13s. So they changed these part numbers, but they are different lengths, people. So one glow plug, I believe it's, I believe the late models are longer than early models. I could be wrong. I could have that mixed up back to back. But uh, it is very, very crucial that you put the right glow plug in. 
the pistons are different and if you put the long wrong length one it will hit the piston so you need to make sure that you get the right glow plug i cannot stress that enough zd32 for late model trucks and zd31 for your early model trucks so that is going to be our parts list there so just copy that part of the video and just uh, make sure that you get the right parts for your truck so uh we're going to go ahead and get the light set up on the truck get y'all set up on the tripod and we're going to start tearing this truck down So first step that we're going to take is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our cap off here and we are going to get under the truck and we are going to drain coolant. So now is as good a time as any to uh, flush your coolant uh, since we're going to be draining it. Uh, if you've already swapped over to Caterpillar coolant, great. Uh, if it's got high mileage on it, go ahead and change it. Uh, but if you're going to do a flush, uh, go ahead and pull your block plugs out and all that good stuff. And then I like to run some distilled water through the entire system and uh, flush it that way until I get clean water that comes out and then refill with Caterpillar coolant. So now's a good time to do that since we're going to be draining it anyway. But uh, that's our first step. And uh, then we're going to jump on, get our CAC pipes off, get our uh, intake off here. All right, so once my coolant is drained enough... I'm going to pop my clip loose right here. I'm going to pop the clip loose or clamp loose right here. A uh, little trick I'll show you is these are very bad about breaking off on the radiator if you just He-Man it. Uh, so just take your pliers and just grab it real nice and light around the actual hose itself and just do a little twist motion like that and it'll pop right out and you can just pop it loose tuck it in your bottle and you're done same thing down there if it's tight you can't get it off just give it a little twist action and pop her loose and go straight in your bottle just like that and now you're gonna have two eight millimeters on your bottle on and buzz them out like to take them and just set them in the cow right there and then now you are going to have your lower hose on this bottle here with a very similar clip and uh, it can be a real pain in the butt uh, mine does not or i would show you how i like to take them loose mine just has a hose clamp but uh they will make you mad and frustrated just uh get them loose and just try your best not to get mad because that doesn't help the situation I'm just gonna buzz my clamp loose like so. And then pull your bottle up and out. There will be coolant left over in the bottom of this regardless of how much you drain. So when you go back in, it's gonna make a mess. Just try to tip that out in your coolant uh wherever you're draining your coolant at so you don't make a mess so now i'm going to get my intake out of here i like to just buzz it loose right here so at your second your middle clamp you got your one on your charger one right here and one that holds this in go ahead and pop your mass 
airflow loose. Take your filter minder loose down there. Pull your ducting loose. And then I like to just take it loose right there. And then I'm just gonna pull straight up, just like that. And then at this point, you can take it and rock it out. It is a pain in the butt, but that's how you do that. Set it out of the way. Uh, don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one on. I don't think that I'll need it. Uh, it won't be in my way. So I'm gonna switch on over here. Uh, these are pretty handy. These are the uh, deep clamp sockets you can get from Snap-on. Uh, I don't know anywhere else that sells them, uh, but they are awesome when it comes to this. If not, 11 millimeter deep. I like to rock that to see if it's come loose. And then you got one down here. So the way that I like to do this is I'm going to take my lower clamp here that's on my intercooler pipe and I'm just going to take it and slide it up onto the snout of the intercooler. Uh, that way when you put your clamp back on or your pipe back on, you can just slide that on, it doesn't fight you and you're not wondering where it went. So before you do that, one thing I do like to say is down here on your battery you'll have a 10 millimeter nut go ahead and buzz it loose and take this wire i don't know if you can see this wire right here loose that's your alternator wire go ahead and take it and get it out of the way that way when you're fighting this you don't arc it up against the alternator like i almost did Out. Make sure you don't lose your clamp. All right, so now I'm going to get our glow plug module out of the way, and uh, most of this harness I'll get out of the way. Unplug your vacuum hose here for your heater control valve, and then I like to just go ahead, pop your ICP loose. This is going to be getting an ICP sensor. Uh, our pigtail, if your pigtail is covered in oil like that, and the sensor's full of oil. Uh, it is time to replace your ICP sensor. That means it has gone bad. So we'll go ahead and we'll get us a new one of those. But uh, next we'll get our plugs for our module loose. These can bite you a little bit. I got a clip at the bottom right here. I like to just push that in, grab these wires and just wiggle it side to side. It helps it uh, break free and then you're not cussing and getting mad. Same thing. I have found that for some reason the black ones always come loose easier than the green ones. Don't ask me why that is, because I don't know. I think next I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to take this, your heater core line loose and just tuck it out of the way. Uh, just so I have more room to fold this harness over. Same thing on this. If it's fighting you, don't want to come loose, just grab it and twist. Break it loose free, nice and easy. Now we can just slide it right back. Just like so. Out of the way. And then we'll tuck it up underneath the map sensor. All right. So now we can go ahead and take our glow plug harness loose get you a push pin here or a pop tool and get this loose these do like to fight you voila just like it all right so now that you have got all this loose and your alternator pigtail connection is loose 
slide it out. Now we can just fold this on over. Sometimes I have, have them work really good and other times they just fight you. So if you need to, go get you a bungee cord and fold it out of the way. So now we're gonna focus on our glow plug module. These are gonna be uh, 10 millimeter nuts that hold this on. And uh, you need to be very careful with them because they do like to round out. And then you'll be really upset fighting it. So. may or may not have one a lot of times people leave it loose which you can do if you so choose uh there is one right below the module on the bracket here that will have to come off uh, just like the rest of them but uh Get you a nice little magnet tray and then these when they come out they do tend to be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes they come out easy like that but then we'll I'll just take this over to the bench and I'll swap my module out and that way I'm not trying to fight this bottom 10 millimeter can be a bear to get on with that AC line so I like to just pull this and do it on the bench we'll set that out the way and then now we're gonna see if we can't focus on our harness down there. All right, so now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my trans dipstick and I'm gonna get it out of the way, the whole tube and all. Uh, just give me more room down there. This is the number one 10 millimeter nut that I see uh, rounded off, uh, just a pain to get on, stuff like that. So just take your time, make sure that you have a good bite on this nut uh, holding the dipstick tube onto the valve cover. And uh, if you round it off, it's really a pain in the butt to get back to get anything on it. So, go ahead and get it out of the way. Like so. Then what I like to do is I'll just pull this off the stud there. And then it'll just pop right out of the transmission back here. And then you can just kind of do whatever you see fit with it. Uh, a lot of times I like to tuck it uh, back underneath this AC line. And now it's out of my way. So now what I'm going to do is uh, for uh, room with my arm, I'm going to take the stud valve covers loose. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually see... Uh, I know I said we we're going to pull valve covers. I think I'm going to see if I can't get the harness out uh, without pulling the valve cover off just yet. And if they pop out, great. If not, then I will uh, go into detail on the valve cover removal and how I like to pop out the stuck harness. But uh, for now, these look like they've been replaced recently. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll see if we can't get them to pop out. And if they do, then we'll do it the job that way. If not, we're gonna have to dive deeper and get the valve cover pulled off, oil rail out, and uh, try and get a pry bar down there and pop them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these studs loose first. These are 12 millimeter. Sometimes this box is out of the way enough that I can get on that one. Yeah. 
Sometimes that box is kind of shifted a little bit and you can't get on that back one, so you will have to get a, a ratchet wrench on it. Uh, but I like to just leave these loose with my ratchet and then take them out by hand. That way they're not flying out and you're losing them. So now I'll just put them to the side. And now I have all this room down here for my arm to go in. Uh, so now we're going to focus on seeing if we can't get the harness to pop out down there and then we'll go from there. So now I just have a nice little pair of uh, curved pliers, needle nose pliers that you can use. It just kind of makes a, makes it to where you can grab a hold of the harness and kind of leverage it a little bit more. Uh, so we're gonna try and see if we can get lucky and uh, pop this harness out. Here is your harness. Uh, so what I did was basically, uh, basically we break this plastic right here and then you can get a pretty good grab on this wire. And basically what I was doing was taking these, grabbing the wire and then finding some way to get this up against a rocker box to leverage the actual plug itself out. Now, unfortunately, if your truck has never had this done and uh, um, these are just original harnesses, the chances of them coming out are uh, pretty slim. So what I like to do is uh, I will pull this valve cover off and then uh, you will have your oil rail and your dummy plug. You'll pull your dummy plug out and then pull your oil rail out. And then you can get you a small indexing pry bar and you can, there's just enough room down there to basically go down, curve it up, up against the base of that socket on the glow plug harness and it'll pop out real super easy then. Or you can try to pull your fender liner and drill a self-tapping screw in and try to leverage it out that way. Uh, just however you see from this point, um, just for time's sakes, I'm not gonna show you how to remove everything like that because mine did pop out. But uh, that's one thing I will tell you is uh, it does make it a lot easier to get a pair of pliers that are curved like that so you can use them with leverage to pry out against the rocker box. It gives you a lot more, a lot more room to work. It's still tight, but uh, that's a pr pretty good way to do it. So we'll move on to our next side there and then I'll show you how to get your actual glow plug out of the hole. All right, so I'm going to try my very best here to uh, use one hand and kind of show you how I'm doing this because uh, I know I didn't get a very good uh, video there showing how exactly I'm uh, leveraging those out. So I'm gonna try my best to use one hand and record while I do this. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but uh, one thing I'm gonna jump on real quick is uh, some people kind of do struggle with these clips a little bit. Uh, basically all you do is you just push that tab. Uh, I'm struggling to do it with one hand here, but you're gonna push this tab this direction and slide it out and then you can pull it out. That is a lock that keeps it retained. Uh, so if you're struggling with that, uh, don't break your fingernail off on it or anything like that. Just get you a pick or a flathead screwdriver and just pr uh, kind of pry it this direction and then we can pop it out. So that's what we're gonna do now. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting my pliers and I'm grabbing a hold of this and breaking this plastic to where I can get a hold of the wire that it's insulating. And then there is a flat spot directly right here. I know you can't see it very well can't really get my phone down in there. But uh, there's a flat spot right there that you can grab a hold. So I'm gonna grab this and then I'm gonna use the pliers, uh, the curved edge of the pliers to leverage this out. So I don't want, you don't wanna grab this and just twist it because a lot of times you'll break the wire off in the actual plug and that's where you run into problems. So you wanna try and pull this as straight out as possible. So that's the best way that I've found to do it. I don't know. 
gonna try and see if I can't show you here. I'm sorry, it's not wanting to focus. So now I've got my wire exposed and kind of right, you might be able to see it right there. This right here. This is the flat spot on the rocker box. Trying to do this on the camera is not easy. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to, but you get to drift. So I don't wanna break that off trying to, uh, just for demonstration purposes. But like I said, just try and pry it out as straight out as you can get it uh but that's that's a good way to do it uh and like i said if it breaks off just do what i said on pulling your valve cover and trying to get it out that direction so let's continue here just like that i, don't, I hope i caught that just like so and there we go so kind of like I was saying uh, you're not gonna really be able to this is gonna break regardless so just go ahead and try and squeeze this and just get it busted right off the get and then get your pliers and grab them as low as you can on this and then pry and just grab them make sure you got it real nice and tight and then uh, uh, yeah, just grab that and then uh, leverage it out as straight as you possibly can. Because what will happen is, um, like, if you uh, naturally you want to grab this and twist it with the pliers, don't do that because that's when you break the wire and then that's when it gets a pain in the butt because it'll break real down low here and then you ain't getting this out without putting a self-tap in it and uh, stuff like that. So let's not do that. Now we're going to move on to actually getting our glow plugs themselves out of our heads. So they're going to be a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, this is a socket that I bought from Snap-on. I'm sorry that I push all this Snap-on stuff. I know that a lot of it's a scam, but uh, some of these part, some of these tools, they do make your life uh, a lot easier. Um, so this is going to be a let's see if you can't see that part number one paul sam tango mary lance one zero so that is actually they actually made this for uh six liter glow plugs and uh it's kind of like a spark plug socket so you get your uh get it down in there get it on the actual glow plug itself and there is a part inside here that holds the glow plug uh, you don't want to buy that. That's fine. Uh, you can get yourself just a 10 millimeter socket deep, uh, bump them out there. And then a lot of times they won't come out with the socket. So just go get you a nice little pin magnet and you can just put it down in the rocker box hole there and just pull them out just like that. But, uh, this just makes life just a little bit easier, you know? Uh, so you can go ahead and, uh, get the new plug, uh, put it in the socket and then it's a lot easier to line up that way. It's not hard by any means to do it without it. It's just something I thought I'd like to touch on to show y'all, maybe make your life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get our glow plug swapped out. All right, so I got myself a nice long extension and I'll just go down in that hole there, twist it until I get a bite on it, just like that. Now, you do not have to go crazy with these. They are, they're loose pretty much from the factory. Uh, they don't torque to anything insane. So like you see, that's just a palm ratchet, uh, not tight. So just make sure that you, I'll give you the torque spec here later in this video when we put our new ones in. But uh, like that, you just wanna make sure that you torque these. They don't torque to nothing crazy. All right, and there is our glow plug. So these have probably never been replaced.
our glow plugs out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get our new ones unbaggied there and get ready to get them put in uh, I'll go ahead and let you know right now that the glow plug torque is 14 foot-pounds uh, so if you want to go ahead and get you a torque wrench and torque them uh, go ahead I will be the first to tell you that it is going to be a pain in the butt to try and get your socket and the torque wrench down in there uh, so just if you're comfortable doing it get you a ratchet you know how tight they were when you pulled them out get them around that ballpark range and just give them a little bit extra it's not going to hurt anything with them being a little bit tighter uh, i do like to tighten them up a little bit more to begin with anyway when i put them together so uh, if you want to torque those 14 foot pounds is your torque spec but uh, we're going to go ahead and get our new ones unbaggied and get them thrown in and uh show you the harnesses and everything like that and then we'll throw the truck back together So I've got all my glow plugs in and tight. Uh, if you're gonna torque them, like I said, 14 foot pounds, uh, that's great. Uh, if you're not going to torque them and you're just gonna go based off feel, use uh, common sense here. Don't be a uh, Hercules with it there. Oh, he's a little Hercules. Show me muscle again. Oh, Hercules, 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 Where's Hercules. Get them about where they were at, give just a little bit more and you're good to go don't be tightening it up with no 3 8 ratchet or nothing like that use a small palm ratchet uh something about the length of your your hand but uh we're gonna move on to our harnesses now so this is my driver's side harness and uh what i'm gonna do here uh this is just kind of like this applies to like just any o-ring uh i'm going to get me i have in my little canister here I've got some Hyperlube. It's some stuff that you can buy. I think AutoZone sells it, maybe. I don't really quite remember, but I've used it for so many years, and I've had really good luck with it. I've never had a single rolled O-ring on any injectors. These, it's just, it's really, really, really slick stuff. Uh, another stuff that I like to use is uh, Schaefer's Molly EP. It's really, really good stuff, too. Uh, and I strictly use it just to lube up uh, my o-rings before we go try shoving them in so uh, i'll lube all four of my o-rings up here and then uh it's pretty simple from there make sure your rocker box is clean uh and uh just be gentle with it they don't they reach a certain extent and they will stop so push them in when they feel good make sure they don't in i'm gonna go ahead and start putting my valve cover bolts back in on my studs and everything so you should have only pulled studs out uh just to give room for your arm if you did it this way so i'm gonna just get my valve cover bolts back in then we're gonna go over and we're gonna swap our glow plug module out and get it thrown back on but like i said i'll have to just do this on the bench it's just a little bit easier this uh this stud right here is kind of a pain in the butt to get on uh, when it's in the truck. So you've already got it off anyway, so we'll just do it on the bench. Nice new pretty one. 
I'm gonna clean this up real quick and then throw this one on. All right, so we're all nice and cleaned up here. like so. We're going to go back in here. You want to go ahead and uh, line all your studs up before you go pushing this down. So get, get all your holes lined up and then just push it down like that. You don't do it like that. You start this stud and push this one all the way down. It's not going to line up real well and you're just going to be getting mad and fighting it. Uh, so now at this point, uh, if you want to, you can leave this lower stud. You can leave the nut off it. This doesn't even have it. But uh, it's just one one less thing you got to fight. I like to put them back on, but you don't have to. Uh, but I do always retain these three. So uh, just your personal preference on that. Uh, not going to hurt anything by leaving it loose. It's just one less thing because it's kind of a pain to uh, get anything on it down there. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start our nuts and get it all tightened back up and get our harness put back on. All right, people. Well, that is where I'm going to wrap the video up. Uh, everything from this point forward will just be reverse of how you took it apart. Uh, like I said, get you some new coolant if you would like. Uh, if not, get you a clean bucket and put your coolant back in. Uh, put everything back together. Uh, really no uh, critical torque specs on anything from this point forward. Uh, so I'm going to leave mine apart because I still need to change that ICP sensor. So I'm going to just end it right there. That's pretty much all I need to touch on anyhow. But uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you all so very much for watching the videos and everything. I really can't stress that enough. Uh, we are just super thankful for all of you guys watching, subscribing, liking the videos. I just I can't stress how awesome you guys are. So uh, I'll uh, hit you on the next video there. Our next one will be on our head gasket job so that's going to be a really really good one so stay tuned for it uh we're gonna i will probably split it up into kind of a series on that one uh do the cab pulling the head gaskets themselves and everything like that but that will be our next one so stay tuned but like i said thank you guys so very much and i will see you on the next one bye